Hello, and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. Having seen how processes are created as part of the boot sequence and how a user logs in, let us continue where we picked off and take a look at process groups and sessions. We intuitively understand that certain processes are related in some way and should form a group, such as when we pipe output from one command into another. So let's see how that works in detail. First, every process, whether it is run as part of a command pipeline or not, belongs to a process group. How do we define a process group? A process group is, generally speaking, a collection of processes within the same job or terminal. Process groups are identified just like process IDs via a process group ID. These process group IDs are, just like process IDs, small, non-negative integers uniquely identifying a process group and can in fact be stored in the PID-T data type. You can get your current process group ID by calling the get p group system call, or try to determine any process's process group ID via get p -git. Each process group may have a process group leader. This leader is identified by having the same process ID as the process group ID, and this leader can then create a new process group and create processes within this group. To set the process group of any processes explicitly, you can call set pgit, but of course that only works for the current process or any of your children, unless you're the super user. Let's see what this looks like. When we log in, we find ourselves in a login shell, ready to execute commands on our behalf. This login shell will be in its own process group. When we invoke a new command from this shell, such as this background pipeline shown here, then all the commands in the pipeline will be placed into their own process group. Since we placed the PROC1 pipe PROC2 pipeline into the background, we can now execute a new command pipeline, PROC3 pipe PROC4 pipe PROC5. This set of processes will then also be placed into their own unique process group, meaning in this case we have at least three process groups, one for the shell, one for the processes running in the background, and one for the pipeline running in the foreground. Grouping processes together in this way makes sense, as we are interacting with the different processes in different ways. But still, all of these processes still somehow belong together, right? They were all started as children from the login shell, and if we were to disconnect from the terminal, we would not be surprised to find that they all would be terminated because our login session was interrupted. And that is precisely what this collection of process groups is. A session. You can create such a session, such a collection of process groups, by calling setSit. When you do this, the following happens. You become the session leader for a new session, and then you also become the process group leader of a newly created process group. That is, you begin with a clean slate. The calling process will be the only process in either the session or the process group. There will also be no controlling terminal for this new session. So if you wish to allocate a controlling terminal, you'll either have to open one on System 5 derived Unix variants or call ioctl to request a controlling terminal. The device devtty then represents the controlling terminal. So this is what we understand the session to look like. It comprises all three process groups we previously saw. And the different process groups in the session may interact with the controlling terminal in different ways. The foreground process group may receive keyboard input as well as keyboard generated signals, and the hang up of the terminal will send a signal to the session leader. We will see more examples of this in action in our next video segment. For now, let's quickly show on the terminal how these groups and sessions come together. Here, our login shell, process ID 843. When we switch to another screen, we can inspect the process information to list the process ID, parent process ID, process group ID, and session ID. Now, of course, we're going to see all the processes, so let's work on eliminating those processes we do not care about right now. Our shell here is process ID 989, so we can ignore all processes that have this ID or parent PID. We can also ignore the initial login shell under which we created our screen session, i.e. anything having to do with process ID 237.
There we go. Now we only have the information about the process in the other screen window, process ID 843. So now let's run our background pipeline, PROC1, PIPE PROC2. Switching back to the other screen window, we can now see PROC1 and PROC2 as children of our shell, PIT843, in their own process group 947. While those are running in the background, let's run our next pipeline, PROC3, PIPE PROC4, PIPE PROC5. With those running in the foreground, now looking at the output of PS, we see the background processes, PROC1 and PROC2 still running. But we now also have PROC3, PROC4 and PROC5 in a separate process group 891, but still as children of process 843. And all of these processes being grouped together in the same session with session ID 843 with our shell as the session leader. Let's review once more how the individual processes in the pipeline map to process groups. Here we have two copies of the cat command created to more easily distinguish them in the process table. Or so we hope anyway. As before, we start out with our login shell, process ID 265 in this case. When we enter the command line, the shell parses the entire thing, then forks a new process, PIT 296, which then execs the PS command. So we keep PIT 296. The shell then forks again to spawn PIT 689, in which it execs the cat command. This process is connected to the PS command in PIT 296 via a pipe. Next, the shell again forks, creating process ID 981, and execs cat 2, which again is connected to cat 1 via a pipe. Upon termination of this process, the parent process, our initial shell, is notified. Now note that in our PS output we do not see cat1 or cat2 show up. This is because the PS command is invoked and the cat and cat2 programs have not yet been exact. Instead the shell is forked the three processes for the three components of the pipeline, then PS ran. Look at the process table sees the process is listed as sh, and then the two children shells exact the cat command. All three commands are in the same process group, group 296, with the ps command being the process group leader, but all of them together with the initial shell being in the same session, session 265, with the initial shell as the session leader. All right. Before we move on to how the controlling terminal interacts with the background and foreground processes, let's recap. In addition to having a unique process ID, every process belongs to exactly one process group. Multiple process groups can be grouped together into a session. These process groups and sessions are used to distribute signals and in that way allow for the implementation of job control in the shell, introducing the concept of foreground and background groups of processes. Process groups in the foreground may interact with the controlling terminal. But what happens when a process group in the background wants to talk to the controlling terminal either to read data or to write data? Well, we'll see what happens then in our next video. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Cheers.